Yes, yeah, so I'm with the I'm with QUT, uh, and uh, we've been um, using drones for uh, conservation uh, and wildlife monitoring. Uh, in this work, we partner with AIMS to try to approach the the issue around coral bleaching. Uh, there's some uh, aerial surveys and some satellite surveys, but sometimes you need higher resolution. So in this case, we use a drone uh, that has a, um, an advanced camera. It's called a hyperspectral camera. And we use machine learning. Um, we, the cameras, this hyperspectral can see more than what a human eye can see. And um, we use it for, um, um, as a tool for monitoring coral bleaching. I'm gonna play a video, hopefully um, it works. Um, so can you, hopefully you can see the screen. Let me know if you cannot see the video, but this is a footage from the drone um, of different areas of the different reefs. Some facts about the, the Great Barrier Reef as well. Um, and we use um, we use drones, but they also um, we use we use information from divers. So great work from the from the divers in this case give us the the signatures or tell us which um, uh, was the most in relevant information about the the cor the coral is really difficult to monitor uh, all the reef with divers. Um, so we use the hyperspectral cameras, we use the drones, uh, we conduct surveys uh, that fill the gap between underwater surveys and the satellite data. This is the hyperspectral camera flying above the reef um, and conducting um, about 60 meters working. Uh, the camera has about nine centimeters pixel resolution, high resolution imagery. Um, we use the information from the, from the divers to help our machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms with the hyperspectral. Um, the hyperspectral, as mentioned earlier, the, uh, it's, got, um, it's got more bands different to your normal camera. It can have, it captures 270 bands. So it, help us to pick up uh, the fingerprint, some signatures of the coral or the different types of coral and the level of bleaching. Uh, this is an example of how the hyperspectral looks at different um, objects, the sand, the coral, the algae. Here is using the information from the divers that uh, give us the, uh, the type of coral and the type of bleaching. And then we can use that to develop classification algorithms um, that allows us to determine the type of coral um, bleach. Um, there's a lot of data um, that we collect. And so we also use uh, machine learning and, and cloud computing to help us um, do the processing. So this is how the, the interpretation of that um, that image looks like. On the right, you see the camera, the hyperspectral camera ta taking some some, uh, some photos of the, of the reef. And on, in the middle image is training a classifier, training a detector with artificial intelligence based on the, on the underwater truth or the ground, the underwater signature of the different corals and then extrapolating that information to the entire reef. Um, so drones are filling a bit of the, the gap. Um, they, they can survey larger areas and are complementary to the underwater work uh, and that has been done for mapping coral bleaching, but also fills the gap as well in, in some of the satellite uh, surveys as well. We, ex in related to this, we also been using um, um, drones and artificial intelligence for other activities. 
Gareth early on talked about different ecosystems and some marine ecosystems or some mangrove ecosystems that we've been monitoring uh, to detect um, plastic uh, and marine debris in, in coastal ecosystems. So this is similar techniques to what Manuel was talking about earlier, about using machine learning and classifiers to detect different um, types of plastic and marine debris in, on the beach. <laughs>